Hello, my name is Dr. Steve Mora. I am a board certified orthopedic surgeon practicing in Orange. I specialize in sports trauma, arthroscopy, and cartilage repair. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain the difference between partial meniscectomy and meniscus repair. Arthroscopic surgery for meniscus tears is the most common procedure done in orthopedic surgery. The medial and lateral meniscus are semilunar cartilage structures that are found between the femur and the tibia bones. You can see these two semilunar structures on the diagram above. The surgical treatment of meniscus tears is done in one of two ways. Either the meniscus fragments are trimmed or the meniscus tear is sutured. When a meniscus tears, it can tear in a multitude of different patterns. It can also tear in different zones within the actual meniscus. Therefore, the pattern and location are very important for the surgeon when choosing to either trim the tear or do a repair. The two most common types of meniscus tears are the vertical tear and the complex tear. Treatment of vertical tears depends on whether or not the tear is within a vascularized area of the meniscus. Complex tears are usually treated with trimming that is partial meniscectomy. The first procedure that I will be showing is a meniscus repair. The vertical tear that I will be operating on was located within a vascularized zone of the meniscus. As you can see on this patient's MRI, the tear is located within the thicker area of the meniscus and had a simple vertical line. The surgical evaluation showed that the tear was indeed a vertical pattern and located within the thicker portion of the meniscus, which is the vascularized zone. I used my surgical probe to evaluate the tear location and size. As you can tell in these pictures, the tear was simple, vertical in nature, located in the right place. Plans for a suture repair were made. My plan was to place sutures across the tear gap and close it down. Step one of the repair is to generate fresh bleeding within the tear gap. This is done to enhance the body's healing potential. A rough ended rasp is used to abrade or to roughen the meniscus tear edges. The sutures are placed across the meniscus tear by using a specialized needle-like penetrating instrument. The penetrating device pushes the sutures through the meniscus tissue. The sutures are placed across the tear in two different spots and then the knot is tightened. The knot is a, a self-locking sliding knot. You can see that it is being tensioned and then a special uh, cutter is brought in to cut the long end. Here you can see the cutter coming in, the knot is trimmed, and then I bring in a probe to check the knot and check the uh, first suture. The same process will be done again. Once again, the penetrator is brought in a different point on the meniscus tear is chosen. The penetrator is passed into two different spots. The knot is once again tightened down. A penetrator is brought in or a probe is brought in to provide some counter traction. The knot is locked and then trimmed. The probe is brought in, the meniscus repair is checked. The tear gap is closed down, the knots are in good position. 
the tear is closed down tightly. This is the before. And the after, showing the, the uh, sutures across the tear. This is a diagram of what was just done. Next, we'll focus on a partial meniscectomy. In contrast to a meniscus repair, a partial meniscectomy involves removing the torn, non-repairable meniscus tear fragments. This surgical picture shows a tear of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. The tear is in multiple planes. It is uh, located within the avascular zone, that is the area that does not have good circulation. My surgical probe is brought in. I inspect the tear, the various uh, planes are identified. It's determined that it is a complex tear within a avascular zone. Therefore, I make plans to trim the main fragments. This is my plan. A shaver is brought in. The shaver is an instrument that is used to trim a loose um, a cartilage and meniscus fragments. The main fragments are trimmed back. I make every attempt to only trim torn tissue. Uh, the remaining edges of the tear are contoured. This is done to uh, prevent acute edges from catching on the cartilage surface above and below. Once again, you can see that this tear has multiple planes, including a cleavage uh, component. Once again, I bring in my shaver, smooth the remaining meniscus, abrade the, uh, the central cleft. Uh, once again, this is being done to stimulate some healing. There's still plenty of meniscus left. The root of the posterior horn is intact. A healthy rim of meniscus remains. The probe is brought in. I make sure that there are no more loose fragments. I check the remaining meniscus. This is the before. And this is after the uh, partial meniscectomy. In summary, the lateral meniscus tear was treated with partial meniscectomy, that is trimming. I chose partial meniscectomy because of the fact that the tear was in multiple planes. It was a complex tear in an area with poor blood supply. The chance of this tear healing was very low. This is in contrast to the medial meniscus tear, which was a clean cut type of tear in an area with very good blood supply, meaning that the chances of healing were very high. I hope this video clearly explains the two types of treatments for meniscus tears, partial meniscectomy versus repair. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If I can ever be of service, please don't hesitate to contact Restore Orthopedics and Spine Center in Orange. Thank you very much.